Hey folks, how's it going? Chris here from the Ministry of Dice and we have got a very special treat on the channel for you today. We were super fortunate to have received from WizKids Marketing Department one of each of the new Marvel Dice Masters Secret Wars Origin Packs and a countertop display of draft packs that we could open and unbox and reveal live on stream. That concluded just a few minutes ago. So this is the recording of the live stream that took place where we did that over on our Twitch channel. So get settled in, make yourself a nice cup of tea and relax as we take you through the opening of the new Secret Wars Origin Packs and a countertop display. Eight whole draft packs of cards to take a look at. So yeah, let's... Stop waffling and get into it, shall we? Great. So it looks like some people turning up. So uh, should we get started or should we wait until more faces arrive? Or Oh. I don't know. I'm just going to my phone. I was just bringing up Twitch on, um, on this All right, well, we'll get, we'll get into it. We'll get started with the origin packs. So because uh, they're... The content of those are kind of widely known now from the uh, streams of others. So uh, would you like me to start, Andy, with the blue or the pink? Oh, let's go for the pink to make the, the boys wink. All right, yeah. So this is the uh, origin pack that's based around uh, Gwen Stacy, Spider Gwen. Uh, there's the back of the box there. Uh, with some info Ooh, on I it. like them. A little handy dandy little pocket sized fun things. Yeah, look at that. It's just uh, it's nice and compact. Uh, it looks like there's four dice for each of the two characters, and then obviously the the, the hot pink sidekicks. It says what's inside: one Spider Gwen character card, one Spider Man character card, one Daily Bugle action card, one Escape basic action card, two indicators, eight character dice, eight sidekicks, six basic actions, a little game mat, and a rule book. Although, how are they going to get a game mat in there? I don't know. There's one way to find out. Game oh. Mat. Uh, Mike's asking, what are your initial feels on the new set? Um, uh, I suppose, with what regard are you talking about? Uh, game effects, the new new feel? Uh, what's the, is there a specific question or just broad? You're asking broadly there, Mike. There's a time delay, you know. There's a time delay. Uh, how do you get into that then from the side? Oh, just broadly, yeah. So. Uh, I'm hoping uh, I've got lots of I'm hanging lots of hopes on the new look, new feel being attractive uh, to folks uh, in terms of you know, recruitment and attraction. Uh, I think having a little box like this that's cheap and cheerful off the shelf to say to someone, "Well, you want to get started? Just just grab one of them for what are these eight ninety nine or something? Six quid, seven quid? You know what I mean?" Um, so I'm into yeah. that faux shizzle, and um, so that's a. Definitely a nice part of the story, as far as I'm concerned. All right, so we've got the cards there, but let's have a let's go over to close up cam to have a look at the dice. Uh, and I think some of the game effects look quite interesting. What we've seen so far. So there's your dice baggy folks. Four Gwens, four Spider Mans. The basic action colours are black and pink, obviously to go with the the kind of little theme colour motif of the. Um, and then the black and pink dice there. Then there's the little. How to play Origin Pat rule book. Which wow, I don't that's teeny think, tiny. Yeah, I mean, I don't think if I switch over to uh, there, it's not looking. Yeah, it's just kind of like a basic overview to get you started, kind of thing. Get your glasses on, hey. Yeah, I won't read that now. I'm sure there's a, a rules lawyer out there who will pour over that in much more detail. Yeah, oh, I bet. Well, Oh, I bet they'd be better off with a card and a QR code. Yeah, for sure. Well, there was. Talk Do you remember Jimmy said um, about that when he came on the podcast? Mentioned about the barcode. Uh, let's turn yeah, over there. Something you can scan and then load it up on your phone or iPad or something. There's your little sure, play map. Probably is. So. Oh, let's have a look at that. It's just just the zones, isn't it? Yeah. It's quite nicely, like the campaign boxy ones were similar, weren't they? Yeah, they were quite good because though because they were sort of A four, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. So the little play mat there, and then uh, oh, I don't know if you you've probably not seen this yet, Andy. Uh, I I saw it on uh, the DM North uh, stream. 
There's a new card back. No way. Yep. There's the there's the new card back there. Looks very exciting, doesn't it? Dice Masters. Wow, yeah, it's definitely looks like a like... ninja warrior. It's in your face, <laughs> Dice Masters. It's coming for you. Ooh, that's fancy, says Donny. Yeah. So let's get into the characters then. So we'll start with the Spider Gwen. We've seen this one already. It's been spoiled already. Uh, so when fielded, deal five damage to target character die. Spider Gwen dice can't attack the turn. They are fielded. And she's got the global where you can pay a bolt. Uh, if target die deals combat damage to your opponent, put it in your bag instead of your use pal. Spider Friends affiliation, decent stats. So we've seen that one already on the spoilers. But uh, I'll tell you one thing I'm observing. Five damage can't... is is weighty. Yeah, the card stock's quite. Uh, I grab. Uh, I've got just a random Batman utility belt here. You probably can't see, but that's feels thicker and glossier. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. Um, like D and D was always a bit thicker and glossier than the others. Yeah, definitely in that sort of ballpark. Yeah, definitely in that ballpark. It's uh, yeah, beefier. Just feels beefier. Nice. Yeah, so there's the Spider Gwen. Then we've got mm. the Spider Man. Again, this one's been spoiled already. Spider Man can block an additional character die. Uh, decent stats, low cost. Uh, Avengers and Spider Friends affiliation, so that's nice. Uh, then we've got the the kind of kind of sort of full RT. Um, are they the same size? That's an interesting question, Donny. Yes, yes, they are. That's uh, I've just put the. Utility belt that I had hanging around over the top of one there. They are the same size. Oh, no buying There's... loads more uh, sleeves then. No. No, no, no. Uh, so the Daily Bugle there, it's got the same game text as uh, investigative... Uh, no, not investigative journalism. The Daily Planet. Which is... How clever. How yeah. clever is that? Then we've got Escape there. Again, this one's been spoiled already. Choose one. Target character die can't be targeted this turn uh, or prep a die from your used pile. Sleeves are hard to come by in your area. Are they really? I've got sleeves coming out my ass. Uh, then there's, there's the pink indicator card. Oh, ooh, ooh, it's all jazzy. Yeah. And there's the black indicator card. That's lovely, yeah. So a nice little start set. Two characters to get you going. Uh, both, you know, with a, uh, an affiliation Solid synergy going on. as well. Bit of ramp with the Daily Bugle. Everyone's going to be able to ramp, so that's nice. So that's the uh, that's the first one. Shall I move on to the uh, the Bluey, the baby group? Oh, be rude not to. Be rude not to. Yeah, I like this. It's just dead. Um, it just feels all kind of... Hi, Ralph, yeah. are you okay? You kind of want to see it um, like on the counter, like next to the till. That's where it should be placed. Yeah. Next yeah. to the till. People go, ooh, Groot. I like Groot. How much is that? Five or six quid. Oh, I'll just chuck that in. That looks like it's got some fancy dice in it. And then draw some new people into the addiction. There we go. Slide that out there. You're up late, lad. Does your dad let you stay up late because it's Easter? I'm talking to you, Andy. <laughs> oh. Yeah. There's the Don't dice. So, we, so we've got the Storm, uh, Goddess of Thunder, and the Baby Groot dice in there. Then there's the yellow, much more kind of vivid, solid yellow colour than the uh, gold sidekick dice. Oh, that reminds that just, just reminds me of X Men, the yellow and the blue. Why is that? Is that their outfit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very um, common. Yeah, look, there's uh, there it is next to a golden sidekick, the event sidekicks there, which is nice. Special side. Uh, yeah, reminds uh, so Donny's just saying reminds him of the uh, traditional outfit for sure, man, for sure. Yeah, uh, me and Donnie that, on the same wavelength. Then it's the same little origin pack rule book and the same little origin pack uh, dice map uh, to get players started. 
And then into the cards, we have there's Groot, Bark and Fight. When fielded, select target uh, character die, it can't block this turn. When fielded, target character die, can't block this turn. So it's, it's a bit random, that one. Uh, Laurier has already clocked the weirdness of that double game text and is uh, following up with the rules for him. So what, can you do it twice? Eh, Ingle do! Ingle do! Ingle do! Yeah, they look good, don't they? That uh, like that group there is looking awesome. Uh, I feel. I think it looks really ace. Um, yeah, yeah, nice. So that's baby group. Then we've got. So you've got to you field him, and you two dice can't block. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's yeah. It just says twice. When fielded, select target character die. It can't block this turn. When fielded, target character die. Can't block this turn. <laughs> we love you too, Mike. It's been ages, not seen you in ages. Been doing a lot of Magic the Gathering and uh, vintage gaming over there, over in the CR game room of late. Uh, so there's the Goddess of Thunder, Stormborn. When fielded, reroll X target character die, where X is equal to the number of active Thor core characters. Uh, I support that one on our Thor core vid. So there's that one. Uh, then the basic actions, we've got locked in combat. Target a character die from each player's field zone and set them aside until the end of the turn. When they return to the field zone, deal them two damage. That's kind of interested. Uh, and then Wallop is back, folks. Here's Wallop. KO hey. target level one character die. Uh, and on the double burst, you can KO target level one or level two character die. And then it's got the global pair fist target blocked character die. Deals no damage. Take that, damage. You big hairy oh. overcrusher. I'll be taking that for when we play our next game. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We've just been do we've just been doing the uh, one turn kills. Oh, there's an ad. they've got an ad. There's an ad. <laughs> there's an ad. Um, but what, what's nice? Don't get no ads. <laughs> what's uh, what's nice about that is that um, if you buy both those origin packs, you've basically back now. Cool. Uh, you've basically got a nice little solid basic action collection to get you started. There, you have got a bit of ramp with your daily bugle. You have got some tricksy stuff with. Uh, escape and wallop and locked in combat, you know. So you've got some stuff to get you started, which I like. Uh, that's nice. Um, and your sidekicks, of course, and all that. And then here's the blue basic action indicator card, mm -hmm. which is which is very blue. And here's the yellow basic very action blue. indicator card, which is very yellow. Ah, my eyes. And obviously on um, on brand with the origin packs uh, you know with their own with the color schemes of the you know the blue and yellow and the black what's and the uh, connection between Groot and Storm so in the battle world where the secret wars take place um <laughs> the uh god emperor doom is so he's drawn together all these different realms and dimensions because the end of the end yeah, Doctor Doom, but the end of the world is happening. So, hang on, let me just put these down here. Uh, the, end of the, the end of the world is happening. And so he draws uh, upon the, the power of the Beyonders. He uses the power of the Beyonders to just kind of create this mm, patchwork battle world, which is just all this mismatch of all these different realms and dimensions, you know, from the Marvel kind of multiverse set up in the comic books. Yeah. And his police force... That he uses in across his battle worlds is uh, the Thor Corps. That's where they come in. So he's he's found all the Molnir worthy and Stormbreaker worthy characters from all these different dimensions and turned them into the Thor Corps. And Groot is in the Thor Corps, and Storm is in the Thor Corps because in a couple of what if storylines uh, uh. they both became Thors. Um, so that's the yeah, that's your storm group connection. Obviously, the Gwen Stacy and Spider Man connections. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's why I kind of yeah. thought of if there can, there's got to be some link. Yeah, I suppose on a cursory a cursory glance, you wouldn't associate. Yeah, I get what you're saying because for me, who's familiar with the Secret Wars storyline, knows about the what ifs um, that have inspired their characters' presence in the Battle World storylines. It just it, it's meaningful, but. 
it's not very X Men, nor is it very Gardens of the Galaxy, is it? That origin pack. So no, although the colours are very X Men. Yeah, the I blue thought you were going to say that Thor had made his way into the X Men or something. No. I was pleasantly I mean, they're... surprised with the educational answer. Well, there you go. Yeah, they've teamed up numerous times, but uh, yeah, in the in the Secret Wars storyline, they are um, they're uh, they're the police force. They're God Emperor Doom's police force, and so there's just just loads of Thors basically from all these different dimensions rattling around with Molniers and Stormbreakers, and <laughs> you know. But so are they the goodies or the baddies? Well, the kind of goodies, but the kind of baddies, it's um, because as far as they're concerned, they are they're good guys. They're they're, they're investigating crimes. Yeah. They're enforcing the rule of law. It's just that the rule of law is coming from, you know, a big psycho dictator. Although one of the complicated sort of moral debates of the Secret Wars storyline is this idea of that um, Doom as a villain. And setting up his kind of authoritative control over the battle world is one thing, but the dude stepped up and saved the universe. Yeah, the incursions will happen. I was going to say they're worthy. They're worthy, so they're not going to be meanies. No, absolutely. They're so going to be able to carry carry the the armor. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, yeah, it's a bit. There's it's in the shades of grey, my friend. All uh, right, Donnie's going to lurk because he doesn't want to be spoiled. For his own pack opening, which I think is reasonable. So thank you, Donnie, for lurking to help our numbers out uh, and let us know what you think of the set when you do get your hands on it. So here we go. Here is the countertop display. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Ooh. packs. I'll go number one to eight from back to front, um, and I'll ask a audience me- an audience member in chat to give me a number one to eight, which is the first pack to open. Guan 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 guan. Time delay. There is a time delay. All right, Donnie, take it easy, friend. Thanks for swinging by, my man. Pleasure as always. See you later, buddy. Let's get a number one to eight from someone in chat. Oh, Donnie says seven. He's given us a number just before he goes. Oh, thanks, Donnie. Yeah. Oh, and Mike's coming with seven. Uh, one, two, seven. three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. So I'll take that one off there. I'll put that box off to the side here. So, uh, yeah, it's a standard draft pack. We've obviously seen the design uh, on the promotional stuff. So we're all very, we should all be kind of familiar with what we're looking at there. If you're a long-standing player. Yeah. It's definitely, uh, I'd say that's an improvement without a doubt. Hi, Rob. Yeah, it it looks just much more, the shelf presence, the shelf lift. Have I got, uh, in fact, one sec. Oh, to one of my boxes. Rummaging. He's rummaging. Rob's here from Dice Station Zebra. How you doing, Rob? You all right? Oh, it's Mike. He's hungry to see the. Uh, he's hungry to see a full art card today. So yeah, if we, if we look at them like that next to each other, that's a Kryptonite Crisis, a Dark Phoenix. And the Secret Wars. Yeah. I mean, they're not bad, but the Secret Wars one stands out, doesn't it? It's got a... It grabs your eye lot, a lot better. Yeah, I'm a bit zoomed out. I'm using the webcam, so it might be a wee bit blurry, <coughs> but I'll try and uh, zoom in. Uh, for the viewer's benefit. Where's my zoom button? Oh, it looks like the picture's like cut off at the bottom, though, for the Secret Wars one. Like he's fallen off, fallen off the bottom. Uh, is that zoomed in a bit? I can't see what I'm doing because I've got the uh, yeah. box open. Yeah. Uh, so zoomed in a bit there. <laughs> Do we know what the distribution of super rares per box is like? I don't know. DM North, when they unbox there, has got two. Um, we were recording our podcast earlier, so I wasn't able to watch Breath Weapon X. How many, does anyone know how many they got in their box break? Uh, I don't know if Mike or Rob here was watching it. Um, so... What am I hoping for? Oh, one of the super rares like uh, Jane Jane Foster or the super rare Thor. I like the look of that one. Super rare Apocalypse. I don't know. I'll take what I can get. You know what I mean? 
I'm easy. But uh, yeah, going back to Andy's point, I, yeah, I can definitely see what you're saying. And it's kind of a bit clearer that this is a Dice Masters set and kind of, yeah. I've got boxes everywhere. I mean, over there. I'm constantly in trouble mm -hmm. with the uh, hashtag competitive wife for all my crap lying around in here. So let's uh, pop the cellophane off this bad boy. My binder's full as well. I'm going to have to order a new binder to put these in. So pop the top. So this is uh, so standard draft pack construction. It's the three basic actions, the 12 character action cards, uh, 24 dice, so two per uh, character action cards. Uh, there is a rules insert, I believe, in here as well. There is. Uh, so that's interesting. So the rules insert, I'll switch over to the close-up cam. The rules insert is now printed on an actual card. Oh, nice. That's a bit... Yeah. Oh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? More quality. Yeah, and you can just pop it in a binder, can't you, with your, uh, yeah. with your set and what have you. Uh, so it's got sort of a keyword description, affiliation description, and then on the other side... Oh, more keywords and such like. So, yeah, there's your rules nice. reference card. Here's the dice. So let's see what we've got in this one. We got. So that's uh, so this one here is the Maker, the evil Reed Richards character. And then we've got some Spider Mans, some Wolverines, two Beasts, two Kangs, two Storms. Storms. Flip that over there. We've got a Thor. Thor. Uh, oh, that's a new one. Who's that one? Oh, Captain Britain. And oh, a Corvus, Captain and a, Britain. And a Corvus Glaive there. So and let's, have, Glaive. let's have a look. Let's see what we got. Oh, oh, look at that. They're sealed in. The cards are sealed in. Oh, that's posh. Got a cellophane wrap on the cards. Has he got a rippy offy bit? I really hate it when card packs don't have a rippy offy bit. You know, like you, you get your knife. biscuits. Yeah, I know, but. I'm not very, uh, I'm not very gentle. <laughs> and a fane on the cards. Dice Masters has entered the big leagues. <laughs> yeah, we even got <laughs> nice cards like that for clicks with strategy hints on them. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, like little uh, rules references. So let's get started with the basic actions, shall we? We've got a locked in combat here. Uh, oh wow, uh, locked in combat here. Um, which is, uh, we've obviously seen the uh, Origin Pack version of that. Uh, yeah, no tampering with the packs, yeah. Uh, so we've got we've got the uh, main kind of core set version of that there. And then, first foil, folks. The foils, mate, feel like proper beastly thick. Like, that's, that's a heavy, heavy card stock there. Uh, we've got the Pirate Broadcast here. Uh, cancel any persistent global ability effects. Neither player may use global abilities until the end of turn. Prep a die from your bag. So it's like a nefarious broadcast with a bit of extra prep. And then it's got global on it. Pay one. Target global ability cannot be used until the start of your next turn. Use this global only once per turn. So it's got the Blackbird global on it as well. Ah, oh. That's a, a picture That's of Mojo super there. Strong. Yeah, that is super strong, isn't it? That'll take care of all like your uh, your gladiator globals, you know, stopping globals from targeting. XG is dead. Yeah, it's your answer to the um, uh, the the new distraction. There's loads you could do with that. Yeah, that's awesome. Although three cost and uh, it wasn't nefarious broadcast uh, a two cost. So you you. You're paying one more to have that little bit of prep as well, aren't you? Yeah, but and then we got our prepped. well, yeah, absolutely. And then we got our first epic basic action, uh, the Siege Perilous. Ooh. Each player rolls a die from their prep area and use pile, and each player may immediately field all of those character dice for free. That's barmy, isn't it? <laughs> That's mental. Gotta give that a go. Yeah, so don't forget, folks, uh, Epic Basic Actions, they've got some rules attached to them. So uh, their effects can't be copied. I'm reading off the uh, rules card here. Their effects can't be copied. You can only use or purchase one Epic Basic Action per turn. And after you've used an Epic Basic Action, you return it to the card. And you can't purchase an Epic Basic Action unless you have an active character with a purchase cost of four or higher. 
Um, so wow. In, or, in order to pick that up, there's some uh, you know restrictions to meet. Uh, but that's pretty insane. Just like yeah, you, you and I both roll two car, uh, two dice each, one from prep, one from used, and we get to field any characters that we've that we've rolled. That could be insane, couldn't it? Mental. Just, uh, that's my kind of chaos. Like. Uh, then into the commons. So we've got the Captain Britain here. Baron Ohio Avalon. Uh, we know for a fact this one was previously spoiled because we spoiled it. Uh, while Captain Britain is active, your opponent can't field character dice at level three. We were only talking about this guy earlier on tonight. Yeah, I know, right? Because uh, you were a bit you were a bit sceptical, weren't you? Um, about yeah. the usefulness of that. Let me just uh, straighten the camera up because the cards are at a bit of an angle. Um, but as I was saying to Andy, it's a reprint of the Black Cat, and I've played against that Black Cat from the, I think, was it the Maximum Carnage team pack? Was it, or was it from... Yeah, it was Maximum Carnage, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's actually more disruptive than you might imagine. I used to uh, know a guy who used to play it with the Triceratops from... Two, um, I want to say Tomb of Annihilation. Tomb of Annihilation. The one that killed level one dice. So all you could ever do is field a level two character. Which, could you roll a level two character in that environment? Could you... Mm. Here we've got a Corvus Glaive, next common on the list. When fielded, KO a character die you control. If you do, the next die you purchase this turn costs two less. So that's very similar to his Infinity Gauntlet game text, isn't it? In fact, is it not exactly the same? Isn't he a when fielded KO and get a discount? I'm pretty sure it is. Not I sure, think that maybe similar. Yeah. Maybe exactly the same to the yeah. So there's a Corfus Glaive. Ooh, another foil. We've got the Goddess of Thunder, Thor Core. So this is the one that gets the plus five attack when you've got another active character with Thor in the name or subtitle. So this oh is a, my. Uh, yeah, two cost dice. Uh not two one. One two two one three two. Max die two, which is something of note. Uh but mm. she could be a uh, seven seven eight in the right circumstances. So uh, again, when we when we spoiled this card, when we revealed it for the first time, uh, I passed comments saying that this isn't like an early purchase. This is actually a late game finisher. You know, even though it's a cheap cost character, it's actually a late game finisher. Get your Thor out and then drop two of these in the field for a big finish. I like the foil on that. The light. I, I don't know if the camera's doing it justice, but the lightning in the background looks really good. Oof! 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 Uh, next comment, here's a Kang, Prophetic Revelation. While Kang is active, once per turn, a player may pay two life to re-roll a die in their reserve pool. It's a, it's a lax tax <laughs> with life. Don't do it, folks. It's a trap. <laughs> uh, then, Oh, here we go. So here's the maker. I mentioned, I noticed the dice there. So the maker is an evil... Mr. Fantastic and Evil Reed Richards from the Ultimate Universe. Um, What's going on in that picture? Yeah, so he's he just he just fucks about with science, man. He's just <laughs> he does nasty things, uh, and I think that's like some big genetically altered scorpion thing that he's messed around with. I can't fully remember, but he's uh, yeah, he's not a he's not a nice guy. Is the maker the evil version of Reed Richards is uh, a piece of work for sure. Not to be confused with Mr. Maker, who is a very nice man. He's a very nice man. I am a sheep. Have I read the game text? I've not done that yet, have I? Uh, while the Maker is blocked, you may spin this die to the level of the blocking character die, uh, which is okay. Uh, he's got big uh, Mr. Fantastic blocking stats there with one, one five, two, two, six, and 227, two, which is decent enough for a three cost. Mm. Yeah, the foiling does look great, uh, Mike. I, I entirely agree. Uh, and then we've got a common Thor of higher Avalon. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. He's a four cost uh, bolt. When fielded, roll the die from your bag. No, it's not. It's not that one, mate. It's the that's the uncommon that I'm one. looking for for that. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, decent enough. Bit of ramp. You uh, might be a pick up in draft, especially if you're playing a Thor core team. And you could do with a little uh, rampy boost. So that's lovely. And uh, then we've got a Wolverine here. The common Savage four cost fist. And he's got Deadly, which is very appropriate for Wolverine. It is. He is Deadly. He is Deadly. He's the best of what he does. 
And what he does is kill him. Uh, right, into the uncommons now then. So we have a beast. Genius intellect. Three cost fist. While beast is active, when you field a fist character die, choose one. Either deal two damage to target character die, or target character die gets plus two attack. So field a fist character and either shoot a bit of ping over the board, or give someone a stat bump. Which I think is interesting. Like He's affiliated with the X-Men and the Infinity Watch people. Uh, which is quite nice. So that's that's handy. Uh, there's definitely it's a big. Damage. In addition to what's been spoiled already, uh, I'm definitely noticing a lot of ping across the board for two. Ping across the board. You know, deal two damage to character die when you. There's a lot of that going on. There's a lot of shooty shooty, but character shooty, not player shooty. Uh, here we've got uh, Kang Hell Ranger. Uh, three cost mask. While Kang is active at the beginning of your opponent's attack step, you may KO target sidekick. Ooh. <laughs> I hate those ones. Yeah. On the surface, I did pause for thought there, as you all saw. Uh, on the surface, you might be like, well, you know, that's all right, KO a sidekick. But yeah, I like stuff in, you know, attack step tricksy shenanigans like this. Um, it's at your beginning of your opponent's attack step, though, not your own. So it doesn't take the blocker out of the picture for your own potential attack, does it? No, might just save your ass. <laughs> but yeah, sure. Or give uh. your opponent some free ramp, which I'm not sure about. Uh, that requires more thinking. That one. Yeah, here you go. I'll KO a sidekick for you. There's an extra dice for you to roll next turn. <laughs> Here's a foil Spider-Man uncommon, Spider Tracers. Uh, like Spider-Man can block an additional character die. So this is the same as the one in the Origin pack, but with different artwork. And, of course, I've got the foiling on this bad boy. Uh, Avenger affiliation and Spider-Friends. I'm really pleased to see the Spider-Friends getting a little boost to its um, its roster. Yeah. Although it's Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be nice to get some new characters. Well, there is a few. There is a couple. So there's a Molecule Man that's got the Spider-Friends affiliation. Cool. Oh, Jordo's here. Uh, I've got you guys Jordo. muted while at work. Can you have Andy do some sign language so I know what's going on? So, uh, yeah, can you be... <laughs> oh, mate, come on. I want to put this on YouTube. <laughs> oh, dear. Here's the Beast Mind Gem, the old common. While Beast is active, when you spend a mask to field a character die, deal up to two damage to target character die. Yeah, more sort of pingity ping, character pingity ping. You're definitely yeah. looking to clear boards and do your damage with uh, uh, with attack damage, aren't you? Taking advantage of all like these. The basics of the game. I like it. Nah. He likes the attack step. And then my second rare in this particular draft pack is the Goddess of Thunder. Sovereign of Asgard. Jordo is number one. When fielded, roll X dice from your bag and deal X damage to target character die, where X is equal to the number of active Thor core character dice in your field zone. Um, so uh, the thing with the, th the Thor core is I think they're going to be a nice single affiliation you know, for theme play focus, but also I think if you can get your draft sort of laser beam focused on picking up Thor core characters, you your draft team is going to be pretty strong because the there's lots of synergy Um Affiliation synergy with the Thor core and the Fantastic Four, actually. So there's kind of two internal tribal uh, drafting strategies, which I think is quite nice. Um, so there you go. That's pack. That's the first pack out of the countertop display done. Um, so let's now. What's the doubles, eh? I wonder if that's going to be a theme. Doubles. And two two storms, two beasts, two kangs. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Actually, yeah, because I'm at max die for uh, beast, storm, and kang already <laughs> from the first box. So we'll see how that next goes. Box, well, two storms, two thors, <laughs> two storms, two beasts, two kangs. Let's have a number chat then. One to seven for me, please. I'm picking the next pack for opening. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Ingledo has chosen number two. Ingledo, number so with, two. With the release of the new set, then, uh, Mike, does this mean we'll, we'll see you around a bit more often? Go on. Uh, come make a re return, make a splash on the Dice Masters scene. 
I used to love Mike and Reggie's uh, video series on the. Uh, oh, what did you call it? It was the the nasty shit. <laughs> <laughs> Making decks out of all the nasty shit. And so here we go. Slide that out there. There's the dice on the top. Keep the cards as a nice little surprise. And uh, so I'll go back over to the close up cam. Uh, let's have a look at the dice. So what we got here? Yeah. So I have. I've got a four in there. That's. Um, oh, it's Phantom X's dice. But who have they used it for? That's. That's Molecule Man. Oh, he's a spider friend. Yeah, Molecule Man. Uh, and then we've got a Magic, a Falcon, Storm, a Thor. Ooh, who's that sparkly one? Oh, a Dazzler. Uh, oh, Bobby nice. Dazzler. Uh, a Star Lord, a Doctor Strange, a Corvus Glaive, and a uh, Proxima Midnight, and a Beast. So looking good. I like this Dazzler dice a lot, actually. Let's have a Hang on, I'm gonna to have to crack the bag open to get into it. It's right at the bottom, but it's uh, that's a sexy looking dice. Uh, oh, Ingledew says it's possible he's liking the change. He's liking the change. Oh, don't get us oh. excited. Oh, I dropped it. Ah, uh. uh, look at that. That's a lovely little dice. I like that one a lot. That's Jub Jubilee design, isn't it? Yeah, it's a Jubilee design, but the stats are different. It's not the same stats as Jubilee. Oh, interesting. Where'd that one I dropped it? There we go. Uh, right, into the cards then, boys and girls. Oh, they're sealed in. I keep forgetting that bit. I'm used to just opening the pack and then <laughs> straight into it, you know what I mean? Yeah, damn their new quality. <laughs> They've obviously given up on the Save the Planet stuff. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bag, <laughs> three layers of cellophane wrap. Yeah. Right, here we go then. Close up cam. So, an epic basic action the cosmic cube. Switch life totals Ooh. with your opponent. Wow. <laughs> it's a six cost, and then obviously uh, subject to the epic basic action you know, buying restrictions, but that's still pretty, wow. what pretty is awesome. What about? It? Yeah. You can just, just change the outcome of a game in a moment, can't you? Excellent. That's Love it. crazy. <laughs> then we have Shocking Grasp is making a return, folks, uh, with a wonderful uh, Gwenpool picture on there. Uh, deal one damage to target character die. If that character is KO'd by this damage, you may prep this die. So a nice rinse and repeat pingity-ping thing. I'm sure there might be some uses for that. You wouldn't find me using Shocking Grasp. No. No. Or any of these direct damage. To, uh, so far, you must be loving this set. Oh, we've had oh yeah. Although, I'm not so much into killing characters as I am about killing me opponents. So, you know. Uh, and then yeah. the Dark Hold here. We've seen this one spoiled already. It. I will. Epic basic action. Pay X life, draw and roll X dice. So, we, we heard about that one. That's one of the game texts that Jimmy yeah. spoiled very early doors before we even knew what card it was on. Uh, but that it's was on our podcast, wasn't it? It was indeed, yeah. It was indeed on the Ministry of Dice. Don't forget, listen to the Ministry of Dice every other Monday. Talking about things we, like that again. We've got the common beast here now. Uh, Olympic athleticism, two cost fist uh, with regenerate. Uh, so that's three out of the four beasts already. I've nearly got a complete character. Let's see if I get the super. Nice. Right. Uh, then we've got Falcon, three cost fist, team watch, prep a sidekick from your use pile, and then he's got a global pair fist. Once during your turn, each player must field a sidekick from their use pile. If able, it's the White Tiger Global back, folks. White Tiger Global again? <laughs> we yeah, we were already talking hell? about that earlier tonight as well. That's insane, isn't it? Um, yeah, white, the return of the White Tiger Global. Oh, comics Mike, if he's still around, he loves the White Tiger Global. Big fan of that one. Uh, then got it, a repeat goddess of thunder. Uh, oh, no repeats this early on. Yeah, got a repeat already. Then uh, magic Ooh. demon horde. Uh, three cost mask. While magic is active, when you use an action die, field a sidekick from your use pile or prep area. That's uh, that's handy if you're playing a weenie strategy. She pairs very well with Madeline Pryor. There's a whole thing about the two of them teaming up and making sidekicks strong, um, which is nice to see. Uh Oh, a vanilla common molecule man, which is a full art. Oh, two cost shield. 
Uh, and he's not 1 1, not 2 2, and 2 5 5. That's interesting. So a cheap shield character. What can you do with a cheap vanilla shield character? He's not foil, though. Uh, no, because he's not, he's not full art in the sense of like a full art chase. He's full art because they've got rid of text boxes on on vanilla characters, haven't they? Yeah, but you're um, Harley Quinn's foil. Yeah, because that's a chase full art. There's like two different types of full art now. Oh, uh, works well if you've got the rare Black Panther. Mike says, uh, uh, works well if you've got the... Yeah, the White Tiger Global. I was about to say, not Molecule Man. <laughs> I was like, it took a minute to process what you were saying there, Mike. And I was like, no, Molecule Man's no good for it. Oh, I get what you're saying. <laughs> then a Star-Lord leading the Guardians. When fielded, your character dice get plus one attack. Three cost fist. So we've obviously seen how powerful that game effects can be with the Black Widow that used to do it back in the day in the Avengers Infinity campaign box. But she was only a two cost, not a three cost. This one's a three cost. Um, but still got a lot of potential. A repeat again, common Thor of Higher Avalon. Ooh, but yeah. Uh, then into the uncommons, here's the Dazzler. Mojo vs. Rebel, three cost bolt. When fielded, deal four damage to target character die that has no team affiliation. And she's X Men and Spider Friends. Four damage. Yeah. Here's my uh, second Molecule Man from the set, Megalomaniac. He's a three cost shield with Deadly. Uh, and he's got the uh, free fielding global. Pay a shield. The first character you field this turn is free to field. So I don't know if that was revealed in any of the other uh, box breakings, but we've got the popular free fielding global in set with Molecule Man. Which is needed because there's some beefy fielding costs on some of these. Then we've got a foil uncommon Namor. Warring with the surface when fielded. Each player draws three dice. Uh, and fields all sidekicks drawn this way. Each player places the remaining dice in their bag or use pile. So it's a character um, instant war. Wow. Yeah, which is interesting. Um, yeah. I'm not sure. So like instant war, you're quite happy to rinse and repeat. I'm not sure you'd want to rinse and repeat a uh, four cost character with one or two fielding cost on level two and three. Um mm. But curious nonetheless. He might be handy with um, like the Magics and the Madeline Priors that do lots of psychic -y type stuff. Uh, then into the uh, back end of the pack, we've got the rare Corvus Glaive, Brutal Warlord. Uh, three cost fist. At the end of your turn, if four or more opposing character dice were KO'd, roll two dice from your bag and prep three. What would be the point of rolling two dice at the end of your turn? I get, I get why you'd want to prep three. I don't know. I mean, I suppose it just puts a couple of energy. That could be really in your annoying. Order. Yeah. Yeah, for um, shenanigans. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. That's. Uh, but you need to roll two masks. Uh, I like the idea of prepping three though, but you'd have to kill four opposing character dice. But that's not. You know what, the killing of four character dies, even though it looks like it's quite insurmountable upon initial sort of observations. I've, we've only just mentioned a few minutes ago about how many do two damage if you do this, do two damage yeah. to a character die if you do that. So you could be shooting sidekicks left, right and centre. Um, so that may not be as difficult to pull off as it looks on the surface. Especially if you've got a white tiger global now to give your opponent sidekicks. <laughs> <laughs> Or Batman, that's nice. Like, right, I'm going to field two sidekicks. Would you like to field two sidekicks? Uh, if you do, I'll slaughter them imminently. <laughs> yeah, all four of them, mine and yours. <laughs> and then we have the rare Sheriff Strange, Peacekeeper, five cost mask. While Sheriff Strange is active, when you use an action die, roll a character die from your use pal. Uh, when you use an action die, roll a character die from your use pal. Oh, flipping heck. That could be um Yeah, it could be a fifty fifty so it could give you a fifty fifty shot on fielding what you've just bought, couldn't it? Yeah. Which isn't bad. Yeah, it's a bit janky and there's a lot of uh risk reward element to that, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah. still but that could be a a good kind of last hurrah swing. 
But I, I don't like that art. He looks Is like he's tired? Lost teeth. <laughs> Is he tired? <laughs> he looks like he's lost his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> So that uh, that there is a scene where that's the scene where uh, Captain Britain, Jamie Braddock, gets exiled. It happens very early on in the uh, in the miniseries. Um, so Mister Sinister and Captain Britain have a bit of a disagreement, uh, and it gets taken in front of the council. Uh, yeah, Sleepy Strange. Right from here on in, folks, we do declare that Sherry Strange shall be known as Sleepy Dwarf. Sleepy Strange. <laughs> Sleepy. Uh, we shall reference as such <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> right, there you go. So that's pack number two, done and dusted. Let's go back over to the box break screen. We have six remaining. One, two, three, four, five, six. So a number, one to six, please, boys and girls. Someone give me a number for the next pack to open. The last... Time delay. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, do you? I just thought we've probably been saying that for like seven years. <laughs> if I, uh, today was time. the day. Today was the day it sunk in. Uh, so Relentless Nettle says five. Jordo is asking, what's been the highlight so far? Uh, I think the uh, colloquial naming of Sheriff Strange is <laughs> Yawny Sleepy. Hundred yeah. percent. That's been Sleepy the highlight. No we like um, we like the uh, cosmic cube switching life totals. Love the barminess of that. Um, and I'm going to give some Corvus Glaive Ramp a try with all these ping for two, ping for two, ping for two game effects. Uh, happy to see another option with the free fielding global on Molecule Man. That's been a good one. So yeah, a few bits. Uh, right then, let's get this open. Sorry, I'm off camera. Let's put it under the camera for those who like to see the action. There's the dice. So, uh, yeah, max dice on a Gwen Stacy there. Spider Gwen. <laughs> there we go. You already got four. You got the uh, thing you've got. Pack. the ones out there set, yeah. I'm already lousy. I've got loads of Storm dice as well. Uh, so let's jump over to the close-up cam here to see the dice, what we've got coming. So we've got four of the Spider Gwens. Then we've got, who's that in the bottom corner there? Some more beasts. Um, beasts. The... Oh, that could be a beast set. That could be super rare. Could be. I've uh, got a Wolverine. Uh, Storm. Uh, oh, uh, an invisible woman, finally. Who's the uh, sickle and hammer? That's Colossus, yeah? Colossus. Uh, Namor, Doctor Strange. Uh, who's the Thanos glove? It's not Thanos, is it? It's, uh, uh, that's it's, a, that's uh, a Black Panther. Black Panther. Yeah, got an Apocalypse there, and we've got a Captain Marvel. So, Ooh, uh, there's some who, super rare opportunities coming some out Some super right now. rare potential in this pack, absolutely. Um. So here we go. Oh, I'll tell you one highlight, Jordo, if you if you're still able if you've not popped us back on mute. Um I really like the Dazzler dice. I think it's very eye catching. And we'll be playing with Dazzlers just to use the dice. I'm like a magpie, I like the shiny. Here we go. Get the second layer of cellophane off. Okay then. Fort Hype. Right then, here we go. Into the basic actions on the top to begin with. The casket, uh, casket of Ancient Winter. Your opponent KOs three of their character dice, moves three from their reserve pool to their bag, and moves three dice from their prep area to their use pile. So it just recycles everything around. Oh, Hang on. that's confusing. Let me, let me just good? process that. KOs three characters, moves three dice from reserve pool to bag, moves three dice from prep area to use pile. No, it's not good. That's all bad, isn't it? So you, you kill three of their characters. Good for you. Bad for them. You then move three dice from reserve pool to their bag. So if they've got anything saved, any energy saved in your turn, nap, nah, see you later. No distraction for you. Move it to the bag. And then, although it's cutting out the use pile, I suppose, so it's sort of advantageous for your opponent, but not really. And then moves three dice from their prep area to the use pile. So anything they've prepped. So it's all negative. It's all bad stuff. Kill three characters, get rid of any energy you've saved, and get rid of anything you've got prepped for next turn. 
Oh, God. Yeah, that's brutal. I suppose the thing with these epic basic actions, like with the um, uh, like with the Cosmic Cube as well, that the the basic actions aren't they ostensibly? So you they're in the communal card pool. Yeah. There's as much risk of getting hit with them as there is hitting with them. Uh, escape, another escape there. Then oh here, here we go, the Beyonder. So I mentioned the Beyonders before. Um, it's the power of the Beyonders um, that. Uh, Doctor Doom and Molecule Man used to string together the battle world. Uh, Reroll two target character dice, gain one life. Fair enough. Four cost. Nice. Uh, although, again, it's a basic action. I'm not sure, you know, cards of that nature, I'm always very uncomfortable about having them in the basic actions. Uh, then into the commons, we've got a common apocalypse, obsessive, five cost bolt with overcrush. Pretty straightforward. Uh, his stats are all right, but they're not great for Overcrush. Nice. Uh, 135, 256, 267. So I would probably say that's a nice... As a common, it's nice to see a, a good common win condition yeah. that you can rely upon in a draft or whatever. It's a five cost, though. So it's got, um, you know, it's not as big a stretch as some of them. No, that's true. That's true. Okay, well, Black Panther's not my super rare because there's the common. Uh, Black Panther clutching reality. Uh, energize, roll two dice from your bag. When fielded, roll a die from your bag. Uh, five cost mask with those big stats there. One, five, seven, two, seven, eight, two, eight, eight. I'm not sure that's the kind of... I'm always a bit uncomfortable with five cost energize dice. But then... Did the whole uh, energize Phoenix with the uh, rush ramp. And that went very well. So And she was a seven cost or six cost, so... There's no need to bring that up. <laughs> Abs Apocalypse, yeah, he's very, he's very. Uh, look at the musculature Happy. on that bad boy. <laughs> Here's the Captain Marvel Alpha Flight Four Cost Shield. While Captain Marvel is active, your character dies get plus one attack and plus one defense, and she's got the Avengers affiliation. So just straight up. I like nice yeah. and straightforward, simple. Yeah, get a few sidekicks in the field. They're all 2-2 now. A few of your weenie characters. Give them a bit of a stat bump. Clean. Just got decent stats. Yeah, that's interesting enough. I like that one. Okay. Then we've got the common Namor, King of the Deep. When Namor blocks or is blocked, he gets plus three attack. And he's got the global pair shield target character that gets plus one defense. Nice art. On the Captain Marvel or the Namor, Mike? I like the name or artwork. So it's the the artwork throughout so far we've seen is very diverse. It like, is, yeah. It's it's not as cohesive as say as Dark Phoenix felt, is it? No, or, or certainly not for like things like the the Justice Box, which is like a homage to that artist. Um, but I like it. I mean, I think there's room for having loads of different styles. Yeah. See, one of the things with the Secret Wars is that uh, there was all these different... While you had the main big event going on with the Secret Wars comic, mm. there was all these spin-off... So each individual comic series would have their own couple of Secret Wars issues that took place at the same time as the main event would go on. So you would have loads of different writers and artists all getting involved. Um, and a lot of these are taken from what-if storylines as well, because the battle world was drawn together by all these different universes. Yeah. It makes sense. It goes with the theme of it all being different universes. So you got all the different yeah. kind of art. I like it. Yeah, absolutely. Sleepy's back. Ooh. That's, That's, quite teeth. That's quite interesting, though. Uh, Sherry Strange, I love Agamotto, four cost mask. When Sherry Strange is active, when you use an action die, re roll target character die. That's quite nice. Oh, God, he's only a four cost. Yeah, just annoying, isn't it? Uh, get your two cost shocking grasp in play. Uh, so I'll shoot that sidekick. Um, I'll prep my shocking grasp and I'll re roll that, that big, <laughs> that Black Panther that I don't like that you've got or whatever. You know what I mean? Is there um, many actions or is it all basic actions? Uh, to my knowledge, um, it's all basic actions or epic basic, basic actions. actions. Yeah. Although that'd be nice to use with the uh, what's that kryptonite you like? Green kryptonite that does four damage to a character of what is it purchase cost of five or more or something? 
yeah, five or four or more. Yeah, so get your show strange out and then fire off a great kryptonite, shoot something, damage one, and re roll another. Re roll one. Yeah. Oh, the ads are back. Relentless Nettles is always like, there's an ad! There's an ad! Stop talking! Stop <laughs> screaming! There's an ad! <laughs> your, um, imagine that, if you had that on your Boom Boom team. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Do the Boom Boom ping and then re-roll some characters. Yeah. No way. Throw a brick. Throw a brick. Throw a brick. Be, oh, I'll roll again. i roll again. Oh, he, does, he doesn't like the adverts, does our, does our mic. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what a three! Do you know what he needs to do? He needs to subscribe. Mm. No ads for subscribers, Mike. Just hashtag, just saying. <laughs> no ads for subscribers. Yeah, no, no ads for subscribers, Mike. If you don't like the ads, then uh, get your get your prime get your prime sub, and fire it our way. <laughs> And we will then make fifty p instead of a tenth of a cent. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike! Some oh, Mike. Bless him. We love you, Ingledy. Uh Okay, Spider Gwen's next. Then go, Spider. Uh, on her burst face, she can't be blocked, uh, but her burst face is sadly level one. Did Mike get his little uh, emote explosion? Did that happen? I didn't see it. Oh, <laughs> Mike has gifted UK Mike, Relentless Nettles, a tier one sub. <laughs> oh, Ingle, dude, you oh. are a gentleman. He is such a gent, isn't he? Such a beautiful man. Beautiful man. <laughs> That's very generous, Mike. Uh, Mike Ingle, do. Uh, I'm sure uh, Relentless Nettles will be very appreciative. Here's so the got goddess three of mics on the go at the moment. Have we got three mics? We've got, uh, yeah, Comics Mike, Mike, Relentless Nettles Mike, do. Oh, and then Mike Ingle do. Yeah. Normally it's the Robs. We're usually lousy with yeah, Robs. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not lousy with Robs today. Uh, although uh, Dive Station Zebra's lurking about, I think. Uh, no, we're lousy with Mikes today. <laughs> when field in, re roll X target character dice where X is equal to the number of active Thor core characters in your field zone. Uh, so that's nice. Four cost mask. Could be devastating in a draft that, couldn't it? If you've managed to get your hands on loads of hey, four characters. From what we've seen already, it's going to be hard enough keeping anything in the field zone. <laughs> yeah. Shoot that, re-roll that. <laughs> Rerolled. Here's a foil. how they play out, eh? Hey. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll no. can we get into it? Foil Spider Gwen there. This is the uncommon. Uh, three cost bolt. When fielded, deal five damage to target character die. Spider Gwen dice can't attack the turn they are fielded. Uh, oh, that's that's the same as the one in the Origin pack, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is cool because it seems really strong, and you're not going to have to fight to get your hands on it. No. No. Blue. No. Yeah. We have a an uncommon Wolverine. Your play hero. When Wolverine KO is a character die, add it to the owner's bag instead of sending it to the prep area. That's nice, isn't it? And then yeah. you've got the global. Pay a fist once per turn on your turn, prep a die from your bag. It's nice to see that on the uncommon, oh, isn't it? They're making Wolverine the uh, the new res or Atlas. Yeah, the new Atlas, for sure. Who set the same global? I know. It doesn't seem like a good fit for I don't see Wolverine as a you know a preppy. Oh, look at this. So uh. I'm into the res now. Uh Oh, Ooh. right. Ooh. Okay, so I've just slid a rare off the top there. I've got two rares, but there's another card at the back here. I think we've got a super Ooh. rare coming down the Ooh. shoot, folks. So here's the Colossus Fighting Limbo. Foil rare. Look at that. Ooh. Uh, five cost fist. Team watch. Put a plus one attack and plus one defense token on one of your X-Men characters. And he's got Iron Will. Iron Will, good. That team watch ability... How, how many times are you going to be fielding him? No, it's not when you field him. It's, will. When, it's when you field an, uh, a character uh, die with the same one. affiliation. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes it loads better. Yeah. So you could really, you could really do some work work with that, couldn't you? Yeah. Can you imagine, can you imagine how big your um, your founder 
Moira McTaggart could get if <laughs> oh. if she was getting her loyalty token and getting a team watch token from Colossus as well. Every time you field a, a flipping beast. Yeah, drop your what's the name? Uh basic action in to give all your uh loyalty counter uh, give everyone overcrush for your loyalty counters and have have a massively scary Moira McTaggart <laughs> 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 that started as a one two. You're like, yeah, I'll just feel my one two Moira. Yeah, whatever. By turn ten, yeah, you're like, yeah, so this is this is my twenty <laughs> attack Moira huh. McTaggart. Say that. Oh, another rare. It is a super rare at the back there. Uh, we've got the Invisible Woman, the uh, Regent of Uhari Throne. While Invisible Woman is active, your Fantastic Four character dice and sidekicks get plus one attack and plus one defense. So that's quite handy if you've got a, a you know Fantastic Four thing going on. And then here we go, the super rare. It's the Beast Illuminati. You did get all the beasts. I did get all the beasts, yeah. Three cost fist. While Beast is active, when you feel the character at level three, re-roll target character die. Oh, I feel that that ties in with another one that you mentioned. Uh, oh, is that level three as well? Was that no, one? that's no. So Captain Britain stops your opponent from fielding level three characters, whereas this right. wants you to roll your own level three characters. Uh, Interesting. Could be a nice bit of removal, but I don't know. It's a bit the the level three restriction just makes it slightly weaker when you compare it to say uh, Mystique, you know from uh, the Dark Phoenix saga. So there we go. Another box down. We're down to five remaining. Uh, one to five, please, folks. Someone give us a number. One to five to select the next box to be unboxed. There's a time delay, you know. Who's going to give us the number? Hmm. Jordo's in with number three. Number three. So get me a little Stanley knife out. A little swipe across the top there. Take cellophane layer number one off. <laughs> get that slid out there. Uh, oh, uh, Vincent, don't knock me, bro. You all right? Bro, I'll not knock you. Um, great stream so far. Is there an official release date? Yes, there is. So uh, the North American release date is April the 12th, I want to say. 12th. 12th? Yep. yep. And then um, the estimated release date, I don't know if you're in, the, uh, in Europe or the UK, but the estimated release date for Asmodee, the distributor over this side of the ocean, uh, is showing as the... Well, the Origin Packs are showing the same week, next week, but the... Um, draft packs are showing as the first week of May. However, they were on Asmodee's new release sheet for next week, so keep your fingers crossed if you are in the UK. Um, so here we go. There's the dice. Hop over to the uh, close-up cam. I've got, oh, my God. Right, so I've got four Invisible Woman dice here, four Colossus okay. dice here, and four of uh, the Phoenix, which will be Phoenix. the Cyclops Phoenix Force. Yeah. Uh, got some Captain Marvel, got some Stormbreaker, uh, Ray, got some uh, the Maker, Namor, uh, the Agent of Shield dice, which is on Jimmy Woo, and we've got the uh, oh, I got Emperor Doom. Ooh, Doctor Doom. So I'm well, I'm well max diced up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no messing with regards to the max dice. That's Fingers weird, crossed. isn't it? That I'm, I'm getting lots of duplicate characters. So by the end yeah. of this, I've not been keeping a tracker. Uh, Jordo did very kindly offer me access to his tracker, but then it, it started to sound complicated and confusing to set it up on the stream. <laughs> and it involved, it involved downloading software and things. I was like, oh, it's a bit scary. Um, but uh, I suspect I'm going to end up with a number of characters here that I've not got at this rate. Yeah. Uh, so Cosmic Cube, Shocking Grasp and Wallop. We've already seen those. Uh, make a return in the basic action, although the wallop is a foil, if anyone wants to see the shiny version of wallop. Your thing, giving uh, Franklin's Galactus a big smack there. Schmack. Then into the commons, we've got the uh, full art vanilla Colossus here. Colossus Inferno. 
Uh, not bad for a forecast, that. Nice. Another full art. Yeah. I like them. I like that they've just got rid of the box. Yeah, it's an epic basic action, no less, uh, Mike. That's the one that switches the life totals we mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, then we've got the common God Emperor Doom. Uh, when fielded, deal three damage to target character to die and re-roll target character to die. Wow. Uh, more. Yeah. More pings, more re-rolls. Yeah, although this guy's pretty steep at six cost and uh, with two fielding on level two and level three in order to initiate that. But still, pretty brutal. Nobody is allowed a field. No field for you. <laughs> Invisible Woman, also Dr. Richards. Uh, Invisible Woman gets plus one attack for each of your other active Fantastic Four characters. Uh, with the global pay a mask target character die must block this turn so we've got a force block there mm. um although i think i prefer the one we looked at earlier that gives you other fantastic four and sidekicks a stat bump here's the jimmy woo agent of shield look at that mate shield affiliation hey that's been and a while yeah uh jimmy woo can't be targeted by opposing effects oh he doesn't really fit in my team. Let's get hope that he gets some better ones. <laughs> See what the other ones are like, yeah. So Jimmy Woo in the comic books is a lot different to the Jimmy Woo in the MCU. Um, so right. in the MCU, he's just this kind of bimbling FBI agent, isn't he, that is mates with Ant-Man and yeah. he's a bit all over the place in WandaVision. But in the comic books, he's like a proper super spy, spy master guy, runs his own team, his own section of S.H.I.E.L.D., out in the in Pacific Asia, you know, he's like a big deal. He's he's oh, basically cool. the he's basically the uh, the Nick Fury of the East. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, uh, let's fingers crossed then. If he's a power player, we might get some good uncommons and up. Yeah, let's see what's what's the what on that. Uh, so uh, the uh, common name we've seen that already. Uh, this one we haven't seen yet though. The common Stormbreaker Ray. Uh, devoted to Doom, Stormbreaker Ray can't be blocked by character dice with cost two or less. Um, so I said that's quite in interesting. Uh, we revealed that one on our on our Thorcore spoiler vid because on first assessment you're like, man, yeah, it's all right, it's all right. But if he can't be blocked by character dice with cost of two or less, he's good to throw down the field. Like, oh, what you got a Batman out and you don't want to block with your yeah. Batman? Gonna have to unless you want to take seven. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And he's, he's cheap for his stats at four. Yes. Yeah, so it's it's quite a nice trick like you want to, to stop your opponent from weenie blocking um, with uh, and force them into perhaps blocking with their, mm. their four, uh, you know, their three, four, five, or six cost. Like So that, that mystique that spins down, she's a three cost. You know, uh, something yeah. to think about. Uh, we've got the common maker. We've seen that one already, so I'm going to skip over that. Oh, um, boom. Uh, then we've got the uncommon Captain Marvel, the last Avenger, five cost shield. When fielded, roll two dice from your use palm uh, with uh, the Avengers affiliation. Okay. It's all right. We don't see these high cost when fielded rampy cards, character cards used a great deal, I don't think. No. The two and three costs, you'll see them around, but I don't feel like you see the five costs as much. But in a draft, you know, might be all you have. Might be all you got. <laughs> then we've got... Oh, this is another super rare pack. Oh! I've got four, I've got four cards left here. <coughs> we've got the Uncommon uh, Colossus wielding the Soul Sword. He's got Energize, reroll target character today. And he's got Deadly. Deadly. Four cost fist. Got one with Iron Will and one with Deadly. Yeah. Get one in, get one in the field. Uh, it's got deadly. Whiff your roll. Well, it's alright. Take a character out anyway. <laughs> 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 on to the rares. So yeah, we've got two. Oh, sorry, no. On to the uncommon. Uh, Phoenix Force Cyclops Fire of Love. When Phoenix Force Cyclops is dealt combat damage, deal that much damage to target opponent. Wow. I like that one. Yeah, uh, I like that one. Look at so, his defense. Yeah, five, seven, ten. He's not got the Phoenix Force uh, affiliation though. Well, that's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit weird, but that's a nice one to use with that Invisible Woman Force block. Yeah. Uh, 
that I mentioned before, or a force attack, get your opponent to attack into your um, into your Phoenix Force Cyclops, which is nice. Then the rare Phoenix Force Cyclops surviving the multiverse. While Phoenix Force Cyclops is active at the start of your opponent's attack step, they pick an affiliation. Only sidekick and characters of that affiliation may attack. Wow. That could be super strong. At the start of your opponent's attack step, they pick an affiliation. Oh, okay. They pick it. Yeah, so that's not as good, is it? Because um, they could just no. say, well, I've, I've got an X-Men team, so I'll pick it. Uh, I'll pick X-Men. <laughs> I'm not sure, I, not sure I get the point of that one. Am I missing something? While Phoenix Force Cyclops is active, at the start of your opponent's attack step, they pick an affiliation. Only sidekicks and characters of that affiliation may attack. Nope, not missing anything. That's just really yeah, good for your it's opponent. Gonna stop, <laughs> it's going to stop the sweep. <clears throat> yeah. But it's not... Yeah, I don't know. A bit unsure about that one. And then the super rare. We've got a super rare Invisible Woman, folks. <laughs> Interdimensional <laughs> Adventurer. When fielded, re-roll two target character dice. And all of your character dice get plus three attack until the end of the turn. Wee -wah, wee -wah. Yeah, that's brutal, isn't it? I mean, she's a six cost, which is fair enough, because that could be absolutely devastating, couldn't it? Uh, Reroll those two. Oh, what? You whiffed them. Shame. I'm going to attack with all these plus three characters now. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? It could be absolutely devastating. Um, so, yeah, that's a nice one. That's a good one. There we go. Another pack down. Starting to get a few more repeats turning up now, though. So let's jump over to the not box too break. Bad, though. We've had a few, but it's not been too horrific. Uh, no, although I am sort of swimming in, in duplicate dice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could literally fill a paddling pool with duplicate dice right now. Um, Goddess, uh, Goddess of Thunders, the storms, I feel like are a bit... Um, dominating but there we go uh, so four left to go number one to four please folks Gordo says that is easily the best Captain Marvel art we've had in Dice Masters love it yeah I think that isn't um, what's his name uh, the Captain Marvel I think is uh, shit what's the name of the artist art, I think it might be Art Germ like the painted stuff yeah. Who's got a number for me? One to four. <clears throat> number four from Dice Day from Zebra. Rob, Rob is still lurking. It is confirmed. <laughs> right then, here we go. Number That's four out. it is. Oh shit, I've just knocked over the uh, the close up cam. Uh oh. Everything, everything all right? Oh, we're getting a bit of the. Uh, it's a wonky. Yeah, got the uh, the old the, the tablecloth underneath. I knocked it over with me. I'll have to check the power lead that's plugged into it because I knocked it over with the knife out. <laughs> <laughs> it's still working. All right, let's go back to the box break then. So let's crack this bad boy open. We need the double attack step Captain Marvel back. Well, uh, again, tune in to the uh, Ministry of Dice on Monday, uh, Mike, because we were talking about the double attack Wally West um, yeah. on that episode. There we go. Get the action. There's the dice. Oh, that's weird. Oh, we are four or something. That box feels different to that box. Like I, it's like it's made out of a different cardboard. Curious. It's like a more Stem. matte. Maybe that's because it's got a full art in it. Uh, right, let's have a look at the dice then. Over to the close-up cam. Here we go. So we've got four things. Four things. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, Black Panther, Star Lord. Um, we've got a Mr. Fantastic, Captain Britain, the uh, Ultimate Spider Man, uh, Jane Foster there, uh, Namor, Molecule Man. Uh, who's that in the corner there? Who's that one? That's. Uh, who's that? Who's that with the... Oh, Scarlet Witch. Yep, so a good potential selection. And a Kang. But I'm max die. Max died up on me things now. Just from one single oh, draft pack. You've not had a thing yet, so that's all right. 
Yeah, that's uh, there's there's it there's, there is implications to that though in terms of drafting with these sets because if you're getting draft packs that are giving you six eight yeah you know if a couple of you get a load of things and you've got eight thing dice to potentially be because in a draft you, you ignore max die don't you? It could oh, be what? potentially yeah. like really wild. Oh, well, this is interesting. You know how I was mentioning Namor is basically instant war? Well, look what... <laughs> instant war. <laughs> instant war. <laughs> Each player draws three dice and fields all psychics drawn this way. Each player places the remaining dice in their bag or use pile. Um, there was something in Superman Kryptonite Crisis that I felt like I wished I still had instant war for. What was it? It's, uh, I can't remember. Yeah, I remember thinking, oh, it's a shame that instant war's not... Not modern legal. It is now. Uh, yeah. And then we've got the Beyonder and the Dark Hold back. We've seen those already, so I'll skip over them. Uh, here we go then. So the common Jane Foster Doctor, when fielded, gain two life and gain an extra two life for each of your other active characters with Thor in their name or subtitle or of the <laughs> Thor core affiliation. <laughs> That's mental. I think the potential life gain on that is insane. So you yeah. field her, get two but then get an extra two for characters with Thor in their name or subtitle or have the Thor core affiliation. So if you've got you know, a Storm and a Groot and a Jane Foster, when you feel the Jane Foster, you're gaining six life. Six life. Crazy. Well, the likelihood of you having every character in your field at the end of a turn is dubious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but... I don't know. Still, the life gain capacity on that seems big. Yeah. Uh, full art vanilla Molko man. Seen him already. Here's the Mr. Fantastic. Uh, stretch, hey. team watch. Move up to two dice from your use pile to your bag. Uh, three cost mask. So, not bad for Fantastic Four teams. Um, if you want to churn. So, quick. Speeds up your churn, that, doesn't it? Yeah, I like, I like you, the art as well. Yeah. If you're... Um, if your bag management's solid, then you could be really controlling what you're drawing in your next turn and stuff, couldn't you? Mm. With that, yeah. It's got potential. Yeah. Uh, then we have the common Star-Lord leading the Guardians. We've seen that one already, the one that gives plus one attack when it's fielded. Oh, here we go. Here's the thing. Uh, what time is it? Uh, when fielded, KO target shield character die. Shield character dice are getting picked on <laughs> between Kryptonite Crisis and this set. Look at that. Just really mean to psychic, uh, to shield character dice. Uh, then we have the full art ultimate Spider-Man. Wow. In foil too. In foil, yeah. So that's common. But is that because it's vanilla or is that because it's a full art character? It's all so confusing. No, you've had... You had some non-foil full art characters. Yeah, and it has got that, common on that it. That looks good. Uh, it does look good. Yeah, great. Look at that. Miles Morales. <laughs> Are the Star-Lord dice still really spiky? Uh, let's have a look for you. No, but the Mr. Fantastic ones look pretty spiky. <laughs> Here's the Black Panther, Gauntlet Wielder. Um, energize your yeah, fantastic four characters get plus two attack this turn while Black Panther is active. Your character dice get plus one attack while attacking. Oh, nice! I think the fantastic four as an affiliation could be quite devastating because they're all giving each other stat bumps and things. I think it yeah. can get pretty, really scary, really quick. Uh, <laughs> then we have a Captain Britain quantum reality manipulation. While Captain Britain is active at the end of your opponent's roll and re roll step, you may re roll a dice in your reserve pool. Don't know why you'd want to do that. Do trigger and energize was what my uh, uh, when I did the video. That's what I said is possibly there's some energize triggering that could be helpful. It's the the only use case I can think of. Thinker. Yeah. Uh, then we have a foil uncommon Scarlet Witch Mystic Arc Arcana. Uh, while Scarlet Witch is active, when an opponent uses an action dice, deal three damage to target character die. That's when your wow. opponent uses an action dice. Crikey. So you have her and Doctor Strange out and everyone's getting three damage 
regardless. Well, your opponent regardless, gets three yeah. damage regardless of who's using it. And that's yeah. So you know, I was saying before, like, oh, I'm not. Coming. Some of these epic basic actions look awesome, but I'm not sure I'd like my opponents to get their hands on them. Well, that's yeah. That's, yes, that's, defense mechanism, isn't it? Yeah, that's your disincentive, isn't it? So interesting one. What we got next here? We have uh, the thing, the shield. While thing is active, your opponent can't target your other character dice. Oh, that's strong. Always handy. Nice bit of control. He's uh, five cost those. Yeah, but. With all the target damage going on, yeah, that's, that's got to be an auto include, right? Yeah, absolutely, especially in a draft. Does the spin the spin down stuff targets as well, doesn't it? I think so. Yeah, that's the dude. <laughs> that's the guy. Well, I think is that the opponent can target you? Yeah, that might be the sleeper. That's, that's the that's the that's the counter. To about seventy percent of the cards we've just. <laughs> <laughs> we've just looked at yeah right there and and from previous modern sets as well that might be the sleeper hit yeah how is thing not an s mm. <laughs> here we go rare kang calling chrono allies uh how is he not a shield character oh yeah that's a good point uh, while Kang oh, is active, a fist, uh, isn't it? he's a fist. Oh, hold on. That's yeah. your punch. Me light, me, me lamp has just run out of juice. <laughs> 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 oh, there you go. It's turned back on again, but it'll probably just oh. turn itself off in a minute. Uh, so Kang, uh, calling Chrono allies. While Kang is active at the start, you'll clear and draw step. You may move three dice from your field zone to your bag. If you do, you may draw extra three dice from your bag. It's like, um, who used to do that? I feel like maybe there was a Rip um, rip Hunter or a Booster Gold. Sure. Something like that they used to do. No, the, the character Rip Hunter. Yes, rip Hunter. Yeah, I feel like he used I, to do that. Time Lord or something. Yeah, or something Time similar. Uh, and then the last rare is Namor leading the Cabal. While Namor is active, your opponent must pay three life to declare blockers. Of what the... While Namor is active, your opponent must pay three life to declare blockers. Jesus. Yeah. This is a good really... pack you've just got. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm, the, I'm really the thing and this. That's you can't you can't target to remove his stuff and you can't attack. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. You can in a draft though, you'd only be able to keep one. Uh, let me just put some power into my lamp. Everybody hold the light. I'm just changing leads. <laughs> it's just I've only got so many plugs, man. So that we can keep those cards well lit. There you go, because lighting and production values are important. An important part of the content creating experience. Yeah. Yep, yeah, I would not accept uh Anything less from my premium content creators. Uh, okay, one to three, folks. Give us a number. One to three. Somebody pick the next one, pack two, for three, me. One. We've had the two Ingle. super rares, so let's see if we can get the full art something or other. Yeah, or a third. I mean, some packs of uh, Superman Crypto Crisis had three, didn't they? Ingle Doom wants to try a Fantastic Four affiliated team. I think they're going to be strong. I think the Fantastic Four affiliated teams are going to be strong for drafting and for, you know, like casual synergy or single affili affiliation events or in a single set. Kind of. We'll probably play a bit of single set on stream for a while. Yeah. Want to give me a number one to three? You've not picked a number yet, Andy. Do you want to pick a number one to three? Oh, Ingle uh, in with two. Ingle beat you. You can pick the uh, the penultimate one. <laughs> All right. Da, 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 Pop open the pack. Here we go. I've just been throwing the uh, cellophane over the over my shoulder. 
So there's just a big pile of stuff that's going to need to hide up when we're done. Uh, do we have a date for the team builder being updated? I do know the date that the team builder is going live, but I don't know if I, you know, this Dice Coalition's thing, I don't really want to. But let's just say it's soon. Not long at all, my friend. Um, yeah, I don't want to, you know, it's their thing. and well, Let them do their thing. Okay, onto the close up cam then. Let's take a look at the dice. So here we go. So we've got a full set of who's that? Uh, Proxima Midnight. So I've got a max dice on <laughs> Proxima Midnight from one draft pack. We've got some nice. Cyclops uh, Phoenix. We've got some Dazzler. My first Mr. Sinister there. Mm. Uh, we've got who's that yellow one there? Some, uh, some Sleepy Strange. Some, oh, an Agent Brand. That's my first Agent Brand. Yeah. Uh, we've oh, got yeah. Sto Stormbreak Array. Uh, that's the evil Mr. Fantastic, the blue one, isn't it? Um, yeah. And the Spider Gwen. Where? Is that everybody? The red oh. one. That is, I don't know if are we, uh, Jordan might have had some in his. That's King Hyperion. There. Oh, okay. We've not had him yet. Uh, no, no, we haven't. So this is a, this is a pack of uh, a few characters that we have not pulled as of yet. So that's. Pop cellophane layer number two. Uh, King Hyperion's got a super rare as well. Oh. In the set. Right. Crossing your fingers, crossing your toes. Yep, here we go then. So, uh, new basic action here, the uh, uh, epic basic action even, the Crimson Gem of Citarak. Uh, each player chooses a number of character dice in their field zone equal to the number of character dice controlled by the player who controls the fewest I've and moves the that. rest to their bag. Players do the same for dice in the player reserve pool. Is the number of character dice in their field zone equal to the number of character dice controlled by the player who controls the fewest? Yeah, so if you've got one and I've got four characters, this would force me to take three of my characters and put them in the bag. And then you do the same for prep area and reserve pool. So if you've got one dice in your prep area and I've got three dice in the reserve pool, I'd have to take two and put them in the bag. It's just a it just levels the playing field. Right. So the Crimson Gem of Citarat for the uh, nerds out there, that is the mystical gem that gives the Juggernaut his powers. On the Juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've got uh, Private Broadcast. We've seen that one already, but another new basic action here. No. Check this one out. Oh. Oh, 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 another one. The Infinity Gauntlet. Wow. Reroll re all character dice. Absolutely. Nice. Yeah. yeah, it should be reroll half, shouldn't it? <laughs> oh, it should just be you have to get rid of half. End yeah. of. <laughs> Throw them in the bin, set fire to them, turn them into dust, sprinkle them in your back garden. Yeah, these epic basic actions really are just total recipes for anarchy, aren't they? <laughs> I love this it. This whole set seems like completely mental. <laughs> okay, we've got the common black swan serving Rabum Alal. When fielded, the next shield character die you purchase costs two less. Um, Did you so have a black swan dice? Uh, oh. Yes, I did. I just didn't mention it. Oh, okay. Didn't clock, just didn't clock it. It's right there in the corner. Um, so that's uh, that's themey that because uh, the Black Swan, uh, Rabum Alal is uh, like a Doctor Doom's like his religious cult name, and the Black right. Swans are the are followers of that cult. And the Black Swan, the superpower Black Swan, is like a servant of his that wanders around his God Emperor Doom Palace. Um, so the fact that she uh, discounts shield characters because God Emperor Doom is a shield shield character is, you know. A, a, th a themey piece, but a three cost bolt character that's got a stat line of 144, 155, 166 that also gets your big nasty God Emperor Doom for cheap. That's solid. Yeah, that's solid. That Actually, that's just made me think of something. Tell you what, I haven't seen. I've not had a Franklin's Galactus, have I? I haven't had a four sided dice yet. No. I'd like a Frank Franklin's Galactus out of these last two packs, universe, if you could oblige. Uh, so we've got Dazzler, Lightbringer. Uh, when fielded, deal four damage to target mass character die. It's all right. Okay. It's all right. 
Uh, then we have Mr. Sinister, Bar Sinister. This was the one that the Double Double and Dice podcast spoiled in their episode last week, earlier this week. Um, if Mr. Sinister would be KO'd, you may KO one of your psychics instead. When fielded, lose one life if you don't have any active psychic characters. He likes psychics. Yeah, so the whole thing with Mr. Sinister is he makes clones of himself. Um, right. So his realm in the battle world is just entirely populated with Mr. Sinister clones of himself. All just different versions of him. And then you've got like the, the alpha Mr. Sinister who's in charge. So I think that what that's probably trying to do is equate the, the psychics to these kind of sacrificial clones. Uh, he's been up to a lot of, uh, in the main core universe right now, Mr. Sinister's up to a lot of cloning shenanigans. <laughs> he's not been not been playing very nice. Uh, have we seen this one, Phoenix 4? Cyclops, did we have the common earlier? When fielded, choose an uh, opposing character card. No, we've not seen this one. When fielded, right. choose an opposing character card, cancelling all previous choices. That character gets plus minus five attack while Phoenix Forks Cyclops is active. Firstly, that's pretty nasty. Secondly, minus five in red has got to be important. <laughs> yep. And then, while, he, while he's active, get him on level three. You're not shifting him anytime soon with those two <laughs> damage pings, are you? For a five cost. So put not... put um thing next to him and he ain't targeting him with any rerolls either. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's it. So that big thing there that you're really in love with, it's not big anymore. <laughs> Can't like, kind of like that. <coughs> well, here's Proxima Midnight. Impossible Endurance. Pretty straightforward. Three cost shield within, with Regenerate. Nice. Yep. Uh, Sleepy's back. Isle of Agamotto. <laughs> Yeah, we've seen that one already. That's the one that re-rolls characters. Uh, so here we go. King Hyperion. We've not seen a King Hyperion yet. Squadron um, Sinister. Uh, King Hyperion gets plus one attack and plus one defense for each different energy type you have in your reserve pool. Uh, and it specifies here that question marks don't count. And then he's got a global. Pay a shield. Target attacking character goes to the used pile if KO'd this turn. Mm. Yeah. Not so sure about yeah. that one. It looks it looks interesting, and you could build around it maybe, but I can't see it really going the distance. Uh, looks cool Person. though, looking card. Yeah. Okay. What you got? Um, Proxima Midnight, Master Combatant, three cost shield. While Proxima Midnight, when Proxima Midnight deals combat damage to an opponent, re-roll that die. If it shows character dice, prep that die. So they re-roll it, and if it's character, they get it again next turn? Wait, I'm not sure I understand that, because if she does, if she okay, KOs... Does to an opponent, re-roll that die. Oh, so she... Because she's not going to... She might not KO them. Yeah. So she's basically KOing them on a 50-50 shot, sort yeah. of, in a roundabout way. Shows a character face. Prep that die. Wouldn't it yeah. be easier? To, oh, I suppose you you're getting out with any when KO effects. Yeah, and it's a little bit different because usually you re-roll it, and if it's an energy, you would get rid of it. So it's like the opposite. Yeah, it's it's like she's got a chance of getting the better of the of big nasties with a with her ninja skills kind of thing in it. As well as that four cost four faced one that we've not seen yet. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's interesting. So it's like uh, when she deals Galactus combat Buster. damage. So is that before the damage goes through? Is she a, is she a potential 50-50 shot to cancel an overcrush there? Ooh. I'll Approx read it that way. Yeah, re-roll that die if it shows character face. So Because you deal the combat damage but simultaneously, combat damage don't you? At the same time, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, wait. Mike's right. Hang on. We've missed a key. Uh, when Proxima Midnight deals combat damage to an opponent, not opposing character. So does that mean when she does combat damage, so it's her that you re-roll? She's got a 50-50 shot of being prepped herself. Is that what it is, then? She gets prepped, potentially prepped if she right. goes through. So I, I interpreted opponent to mean, yeah. Right. Inter yeah, okay. That makes more sense. 
So we spent a lot of time there misinterpreting the card. You're welcome. Uh, Stormbreaker Ray Thorco. That is the Ministry of Dice Way. <laughs> Energize. Deal two damage to target character die. Uh, and that when does. fielded, KO target mass character. So. Bye bye. <laughs> yep. See you later. Uh, then we've got the Maker, Dark Ultimates. Team Watch, target character die gains deadly. Um, uh, okay. And that's Villain, Villain affiliation. So that's quite interesting. What's yeah, this so cost? Can, oh. uh, four mm. cost, yeah. Pop him out in the field, spam some low cost villains, and give all your other villains deadly. Could have some juice to it. Maybe not. Could work quite well with uh, the Villain Mystique or something. Then we've got the rare Agent Brand, Agent of Sword. When fielded, two target character dice get plus one attack. Not bad for two costs. Not bad for two costs, yeah, but I'm underwhelmed. And then finally, a foil Spider Gwen, interdimensional travel watch. She's got Recruit, uh, a bolt character dice, and then she's got a global. Pay a bolt if target die deals combat damage. Oh, it's the same one that's on the other on the uh, other rarities. Uh, if target die deals combat damage to your opponent, put it in your bag instead of the use pal. Um, but decent enough. Recruits never really... They, it's like... I feel like WizKids want recruit to be a thing and therefore keep printing recruit characters. Mm. <laughs> it's like there's something they know about recruit that we don't. <laughs> <laughs> like there's a way we should be using it that we're not. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't help but thinking yeah. that that's the case. Right, we're down to two. Um, so, Andy, I said you could make the next choice. Uh, so, one or two, please, my friend. Numero uno, Silver Playo. Numero uno. Here we go. Quite a, people, a few people watching us now. There's like a, a little tracker says there's 11 viewers. Hello, 11 people. So, welcome, everybody, if you just recently joined us or not. Uh, so, let's get that open there. Add that to the pile. There's a little cellophane mountain that's gathering behind me. Uh, pop that, pop that. Slide that out there. There we go. Just dying that one. Oh, there's a there's a Galactus. Ooh. Your wish is my command for the universe. Lots of emotes. Yeah, Mike's spamming the emotes. Single dude's coming in with some uh, uh, with some googly eyes. So here we got Corvus Glaive, Kang. Black Panther, Wolverine. Uh, we've got the Mr. Fantastic, the good guy, Mr. Fantastic. Apocalypse, Stormbreaker Ray. Uh, Franklin's Galactus there. Uh, we've got four. Max Dion, Miles Morales, Ultimate Spider-Man. Boom. Uh, Falcon and the Thing. Did I miss anybody there? I missed the Black Swan out last time, didn't I? Mm. <laughs> Yeah, it's getting late. It's 20 past midnight for us. Second to last pack, mate. We can do this. Super rare. Super rare. Let's get a third. Super rare. A third super rare. Wouldn't that be epic? Uh, we've got an ad coming soon, viewers. Mike can have his little... Oh, no, Mike will be all right now because Ingle yeah. uh, gifted him a sub. Um, so, we've seen... Yeah, we've seen all the basic actions, but uh, I don't know if some folks might be oh, interested in seeing one. The... The foil version of the Siege Perilous there. Uh, then into the commons. Uh, we've got the common Black Panther clutching reality. I think we've seen that one already, haven't we? Uh, Energize. Yeah. yeah, I'm starting to lose track now. Uh, common Corvus Glaive, we've seen that one already. The Franklin's Galactus I've got is the full art vanilla one that's just uh, blank game text but with the, oh, the, big, nice. the, the four dice sides, which is lovely jubbly. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then we've got the common Kang. <clears throat> oh, that's interesting. While Kang is active, once per turn, a player may pay two life to re-roll a die in their reserve pool. We have seen that one already, actually. I'm sure we have. Uh, we've got the Thing here. Uh, four cost fist. When fielded, KO target shield character. Shield. Yeah. Which is, uh, again, that's a comic, a comic book kind of theme law lore reference there. On the uh, the basic action uh, from the moment where Franklin's Galactus and the uh, thing the thing gets grown into a giant thing, uh, and he gets into a fist fight with 
the Franklin's Galactus, the massive Franklin's Galactus. And so Wallop is so it's uh you know it's referencing the same moment by KOing a um, shield yeah. character there. Yeah. Uh Ultimate Spider Man, Life Rast Stowaway. You may field Ultimate Spider Man for free. So the life rafts, um, <clears throat> Reed Richards created the life rafts to save. So the, the driving force of the Secret Wars storyline is that there are two life rafts from the 616 universe. Well, not just from the 616 universe, um, from the Ultimate and the 616, the two main comic book universes that they, pu- they were actively publishing comics around. And these two life rafts land. Uh, and one life raft has got... Um, a Mr. Fantastic, uh, Black Panther, Ultimate Spider-Man, a Peter Parker Spider-Man, so on and so forth. And then there's a villainous life raft that's got a Thanos, a Corvus Glaive, Proxima Midnight. I think uh, that's where the, the maker, the Ultimate Universe Evil Reed Richard is. So that's the driving force, is these two life rafts. And they remember that there is, that this world exists as a result of the incursion event that was ending the multiverse. Right. So <laughs> that's the, the sort of driving force behind it. Uh, we've got Wolverine Savage, the one with Deadly. You've seen that already. Nice. Then we've got Falcon, Wings from Black Panther. Uh, that's the one that recruits psychics. We've seen that already. Ooh, shiny Mr. Fantastic, uh, which is the same game text as the AVX version. Brilliant scientist. Three cross mass. Mr. Fantastic gets plus two attack and plus two defense. And he's got the uh, force attack level. Get that in use Ooh. with your... Uh, what was the one? Was it the Phoenix Cyclops? Which was the one we wanted to force attack for? Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. I can't remember. I can't remember. Whichever one it was we were talking about before needing a force attack. Um, Ultimate Spider-Man Rebellion in Manhattan. When fielded, re-roll target Thor Core or Bolt character dice. Okay. So... Not broadly useful, but in draft, I reckon you'd want to pick one of these up. <laughs> that'll get rid of your Dazzlers, that'll get rid of your Black Swans, that'll get rid of your Goddess of Thunders, your Groots, your Thor of Avalons, you know, Thor of Higher Avalons. So he could be a little bit niche. Then we've got the Rare Apocalypse Baron. While Apocalypse is active, when you could use a global ability, you may pay a Bolt and a mask bolt and a mask and feel the psychic from your use pile and bag uh, until you have four psychics in the field zone you just click just clear your bag use flavorability you may pay two energy to field psychic from your use pile and bag until you have four psychics okay yeah, but there's a lot there's a lot going on there, man, because I mean you're clearing your bag and your use pile for a start. But it says field a sidekick. So anything that gets triggered by fielding effects, the fielding of a yeah. character goes off. Um and then you end up with four sidekicks in your field, which is nice. There's more sidekicks. Really me- well, sure. I'll just I just feel like there's more to that. Um card that meets the eye uh then a rare stormbreaker ray corbinite energize deal two damage to target fist character when fielded ko target fist character uh, and then he's okay. got a global you ready for this pay three roll a character die from your use pile field it if it shows a character face can only be used if one of your character dice was spun to an energy face or re-rolled this turn so if your opponent spins or re-rolls one of your characters, you could pay three energy to roll a character dice from your use pile. Oh, field it. Yeah. So, oh, what, you're getting rid of my thing? Well, I'll just have this instead. <laughs> <laughs> Price, and there you, you go. That, that's the end of that pack. We are on the final pack now, then. The last Ooh, pack, folks. The last pack. The epic journey. Of Secret Wars unboxing is soon coming to a close. But stick around because we've got one more pack to go. So add to the cellophane mountain. Pop that out there. Come on. There we go. Ooh, Dazzler Dice. 
And a max die of uh, orange axe person. Who's that? Terax. Max die, just in one bag, straight out the gate. <laughs> Not seen that many Groot. We. No, although I've got Max Die Groot in here as well. Yeah, yeah, I'll put it there. Uh, Max Die Groot, two Dazzlers, oh, two go. things. Uh, full Terax. Jimmy Woo, another Jimmy Woo mm. there. Maybe we'll get a better one. Uh, Scarlet Witch, Apocalypse. Uh, who's that? I can't make out who that is. Oh, I think that might be um, Madeline Pryor, which we've not had one of yet. Oh. An Agent Brand and a Spider-Man. So let's see how this goes. Pop this next bit of cellophane off. All oh, the cellophanes. Yeah. Save the cellophane. Save the planet, folks. Um, we've got uh, a, a normal uh, Daily Bugle. We've seen that already. Oh, here you go. Uh, here's an invulnerability. We've not had one of them yet. Uh, Until the pretty. end of the turn, when one of your attacking character dice is KO'd, return it to the field. So, yeah, you like the artwork on that one, don't you? Yeah. Uh, and then you've got the uh, uh, the Bolt attack yeah. buff global. Uh, and then Wallop. We've seen Wallop already, so I'll skip that. Um, we've got Agent Brand Alpha Flight. While Agent Brand is active, your character dice get plus one defense. All right, I suppose. Yeah. Nice uh, broad blanket. Uh, improvement. Here's a group. Oh, sorry, mate. You were going to say something. I didn't get the fast one. No. No. Uh, skilled investigator. When fielded, roll two dice from your bag. We. No, I'm sorry, man. It's the common Jimmy Woo again, but a shiny version this time. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Madeline Pryor, Goblin Horde. Uh, this one's got Energize. Field a sidekick from your use pal. While Madeline Pryor is active, you, your sidekicks get plus one defense. Uh, okay, we've got Scarlet Witch Chronokinesis. Uh, while Scarlet Witch is active, you can re-roll the dice in your reserve pool at the end of your main step. Nice. Uh, so if you want to hear some strategic talk about that one, go check out the latest episode of Rolling Thunder. Here's Terax, the truly enlightened. When fielded, roll two dice from your bag. Nah, like we said before, not keen on these when fielded uh. ramp cards when there are five costs, but you might use it in draft. Apocalypse, evil, the uncommon. While your life total is higher than your opponent's, Apocalypse gets plus two attack. Mm. Yeah. Meh. Not sure about that one. Uh, okay, so here's group bark and fight the proper one. With only one instance of when fielded target character cut die can't block this turn. Ah, so we think that it's a uh, duplicate printing. Yeah, it's a typo, isn't it? Uh, Spider Man, Spider Tracers. Spider Man can block an additional character. We've seen that one already. Yeah. Oh, here you go. Here's one we've not seen before. Terax, Herald of Galactus. When fielded, re roll target character die. Okay, nice. Uh, Straight up, although. I feel that there's more re rolly stuff at Chiba. Yeah, um, but it's the, I suppose you might be after the big stats as well. Here's an, a Dazzler, Alison Blair. Uh, while you have an active character die with a cost of four or greater, Dazzler is free to field. Uh, when fielded, deal two damage to target non-bolt character die. Okay. Nice. Yep. And then the final rare is the Thing, Brawn of the Team. Hey. Six cost fist. When fielded, put a plus one attack and plus one defense token on each of your fantastic four characters. Like that, although there's been some debate as to whether the plus one attack and plus one defense goes on the card or the dice. Uh, and then he's got a print global. Pay a fist once per turn. On your turn, prep a die from your bag. So another prep global in the mix. Nice. Yeah. And there we go, folks. That concludes... The Secret Wars countertop display unboxing and the Origin Pack unboxing. I'm done. Ooh, I'm out of stuff. That's good. Yeah. That's all, folks. That's all, folks. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely characters that I don't think I've seen a card or a dice for there. Mm. 